ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. Well, folks, here we are at the end of the week again. Are you planning a motoring trip, by the way? Certainly a lot of you must be. This is a great time of year for hitting the trails wherever you live. The reason I mention this is because I have a suggestion here that may prove just the thing you've been looking for. A light, easy-to-digest supper that you can prepare in a minute when you get back from your trip. Horlicks Malted Milk. Just the sort of cool, refreshing drink that your family and your friends will appreciate after driving in the country. If you've never thought of this, try it out this weekend. Make up a pitcher full and keep it in the refrigerator ready to serve your family or guests. Once you've bought a package of Horlicks malted milk, you'll never be without it again. Horlicks has so many other uses in the home. Your druggist keeps it in both natural and chocolate flavors, whichever you prefer. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Well, yesterday, Lum and Abner learned definitely that Squire Skimp's threat to open up a competitive picture show was not idle talk. As he has rented the lodge hall in Pine Ridge and also the chairs they had planned to use. Well, this leaves the old fellows with the problem of finding seating accommodations for the audience they expect to have. And as we look in on Pine Ridge today, we find Lum and Abner down at the Jotham Down store discussing this new complication. Listen. Yeah, we've got to have seats of some kind, Abner. We can't expect folks to stand up and watch the show. Well, we can't afford to buy new ones, neither. Them things runs into money. I don't know what to do. I never slept a wink all last night worrying about it. Of course, we might could get them seats over at the schoolhouse for the summer. School way out now till fall. No, them seats wouldn't do that. Now. They're, they're too little, most of them. Well, we could just let the children sit in them little seats. Well, you couldn't get children to come out to the show if they had to sit down at a school desk. Especially this time of the year, they want to get as far away from one of them things as they can. Yeah, I reckon so. But the road folks could sit in them, if they could get in No, no, them, them seats wouldn't do. It wouldn't look right anyway, having folks sitting around at them desks looking at the show. Well, I thought you'd already made arrangements with Mose Moose to rent them chairs from a lot, Paul. I did. And I jumped Mose about it this morning, but he says Squire called a meeting of the trustees of the lodge yesterday and made him a proposition to rent the chairs, lodge hall, and all. Yeah. The squire's one of the high officers in the lodge, and he'll do my nine thing he says. Uh, you ought to got most to put that in writing when you made the deal with him. Well, I never thought about squire or anybody else opening up a show again. Yeah. I wish we'd have thought about renting that lodge hall. That's just going to make a dandy place for a picnic show. Well, I never had no idea they'd rent it. They never have let it out before for nothing. Yeah. Well, I'm just afraid we're going to have trouble on ever finding any seats around here. Yeah, we'll find some. Now. If Squire Skim thinks he's going to keep us from opening up our picture show just by renting them chairs, he's just got another thinker coming. I'm more determined than ever to make a success of it now. Yeah, well, I'm just glad we got started when we did. We'll be opened up and doing a big business before he gets that place ahead over our rent. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we've got the music all arranged for her and the moving picture machine bought. Yeah. Old Cedric's already learned how to run it. We've got to jump on him all right. <laughs> yeah, he'll find out he's bucking up again the wrong color this time. Oh, yeah. He'll be bankrupted in two weeks' time. <laughs> Wait till he starts trying to order some moving pictures. <laughs> I've got all the pictures that drummer had to sell that was in his town already bought for us. Yeah, that's right. I just can't wait to see them things. Wish we could open up tomorrow. Well, I was talking to Ezra this morning. Uh, he says uh, Carpenter's ought to be two over there by the middle of next week. Yeah, I wish they'd hurry. Well, he's got Forrest Lewis. He's pretty good hand with the carpenter uh, hammer and saw, you know. Yeah. Well, I just hate for Squire to get opened up first. That's what I'd think. Well, I've got every carpenter in town working on it over there. Damn it. It's right smart to work to change in a cotton warehouse a theater that way. Oh, yeah, yeah. And to put that ceiling in it and make the floor slanting that away and change up the front some. A lot to do. Uh, I believe that was our rain one, huh? Oh, yeah, might have been. I wasn't paying no attention. Well, I wasn't either, but I think it was. Hello? This is the Jotham Down store. I'm Eddard's manager of the Pine Ridge Planetarium doing the talking. Hey, you always get that. Mom? Oh, yeah. 
Well, we ain't got nobody here right now, Sister Simpson, to do the delivering. Well, I guess I could, but... Uh, why don't you call Dick Huddleston's store? He keeps good stuff down there. Oh, yeah. Well, me and Abner's awful busy here right now. Well, yeah, sure, we appreciate your business, but we can't just draft everything to bring you over a can of baking powder. I think we... Hello? Hello? Yeah. She must have hung up. I can watch she got her back up about. She wouldn't care whether we got any seats for a picture show or not. Well, Your Honor, it's on his grand path now, Lom. He could have delivered them. Yeah. Well, let her go. She won't stack that way about it. We can't be running around here selling a dime's worth of this and a dime's worth of that. Our time's getting valuable. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah it's a good thing you never got here no sooner, Grandpap. You'd have had to make a deliver. Well, I reckon I won't be delivering no more groceries for you, fellas, so. though. Huh? Won't be delivering no more. No, I can just come over to tell you, fellas, I'm quitting. Well, I'll be dead, but... Huh? I know it. I know the minute that we give you that job of playing that player piano of yours over there first at the picture show while you start getting dependent. Yeah, we're going to need you here in the store more than ever now, Grandpap, since we've got the picture show business to look after, too. Why, sure. Well, I wouldn't have time to work down here now, no how. Oh, well, now, you, you, you just have to furnish music over there every night. That ain't going to affect your work over here in the store during the day. No, you start quitting the store here, Grandpap, and we might just not let you furnish your music for us. Get somebody else to do it. Well, I guess that's just what you'll have to do anyway, man. Well, now, wait a minute, Grandpap. Don't pay no attention to Abner. We ain't fired you yet. No, not yet. Well, you ain't going to get a chance to fire me, Abner Peabody, for I ain't going to work down there. I've got a job paying me better money. Doing what? Playing the piano, same as I was going to do for you fellas. I'm starting to work for Squire Skimp tomorrow. Why, Skimp? Yeah, he's putting in a picture show over there in the lodge hall. Well, we know about that. Yeah. I hate to quit you fellas, especially before I even get started, but I've got to look out for myself, get the best I can for my talents. Talent. Playing a player of piano. Well, I don't blame you for that, Grandpa, but how much is Squire giving you? Six dollars a week. Just twice what you fellas offered me. Well, I'll sound to goodness. Did he know that you was aiming on furnishing the music for us? Yeah, he said that was the reason he was paying me such wages as that. Well, that sounds just like him, yeah. Uh, Suppose we raise them wages a little, Grand Grandpap, give you a little more than he said. Yeah. Well, it's two and now, Lom. I signed a green man. Contract to furnish the music at that price for three months. Yeah. Well, I'll sound to goodness. He'd do anything. Died is him making a man like you sign agreement. If I'd have had any sense, you'd have did the same thing with us. Well, I expect I better be going, sir. I hope you boys don't feel hard at me over. Well, we couldn't hardly blame you for getting all you can, Grandpa. No, we ain't blaming you, Grandpa. No. Well, I want to run over and tell the charity the good news. I'll see you fellas later. All right, Grandpa. So long. Hmm. Yeah, it looks like we ain't going to have no place for them to sit down to listen to the music. No music for them to listen to if they were sitting down. And well, that's the only player piano in town, too. So Squire thinks he's going to keep us from going into the picture show business just by hiring our piano player. Oh, Swan, you guys. I grant his we'll show him a thing or two. I wish Cedric could play that piano or something. Well, all me, Lom, he's going to be running the picture machine. He can't be up there in that booth and down there in front playing the piano at the same time. Oh, that's right. No. Dad blame that squire. Everything was running so smooth, so he had to butt in. I hate him. I hate him too, Peter. I just can't stand Yeah, him. wait a minute. If that's somebody else wanting groceries, I'm going to slap the receiver right smack up in her ear. Yeah. Hello? Yeah, yeah this is him. Oh, well, howdy, Ezri. Oh, uh, how are you getting along over there? Huh? You're doing what? What's the matter? Well, now, Ezri, you can't do that. Well, uh, what's Squire paying you? Well, we'll just double that. Pay you twice as much. Oh, my. Oh, you have. Well, you oughtn't to sign it. You're just knocking yourself out of twice or what he's a pain. Yeah, it's too late now, I reckon. Uh, did they all sign the contract? 
Uh-huh. Yeah. All right, Adrian. Goodbye. What's the matter, Lom? Let me sit down. What's wrong with Adrian? Why, him and all the rest of our partners over there quit and went to work for Squire. Well, I'll be dead blamed. It just looks like there ain't no one thing that fella won't do. He's a snake in the weeds if ever I seen one. Well, that just about winds us up there, Lom. We had every partner in town working for us. Well, that ain't going to stop us, I'll tell you that. I granny, we're going to open up that picture show if we have to finish it ourselves. Well, for the land sakes, look coming in yonder, Lom. <laughs> well, I do know, Seth. Yeah. yeah, we can get him to help. Why, sure. The three of us can finish it up. Yeah. Well, good for Cedric. <laughs> <laughs> I know that was a good idea, sending him in to learn how to manipulate the picture machine. Yeah. <laughs> well, I never even knowed he's back from the county. Well, I forgot he was due back today. <laughs> well, Cedric, howdy, yeah, howdy. Come in here, Cedric. How'd you get along in there? Oh, all right, I reckon. <laughs> How are you, Mr. Long? Yeah, just fine, Cedric. Sit down and tell us all about it. Yeah, yeah. Well, I got to be going in just a minute, though. I just come over to give you that $15 back that you give me for expenses while I was in there at the county seat to learn how to run that moving picture machine. <laughs> Well, you don't have to pay that back, Cedric. We give you that. Why, no, Cedric. You keep that money. Well, I'd rather give it back, though. I, I wouldn't feel like letting you all pay my expenses in there, especially when I'm going to work for Mr. Squire, running that moving picture machine for him. Oh. Well, looks like it might have been best to have taken Squire Skimp in as a partner after all. And now... With summer vacations near, I'm pleased to let you hear what Mrs. Emma Foreman of Indianapolis, Indiana, says about a recent motor trip of hers. We enjoy Lum and Abner and Horlick's Muir and Out for each evening as we're eating our dinner. Consequently, when we planned an automobile trip to Cleveland, we thought a bottle of Horlick's Small Milk Tablets an essential. From Indianapolis to Cleveland is a long and tiresome trip for one lady and two wiggly, giggly children. Well, 120 miles from Cleveland, I became so sleepy I was afraid to trust myself to drive. And the children were tired and cross. So I stopped the car in a small Ohio town and we all ate some tablets. Lo and behold, I was no longer sleepy and the children were rested and happy. On we went, arriving in Cleveland in plenty of time for dinner. In the future, we're always going to have Horlick's malted milk tablets. Here's wishing you and Lum and Abner and Carlton Brickett the best of success in the future. Well, thanks for your letter, Mrs. Foreman. I think your experience will interest a lot of our listeners who haven't yet tried Horlick's tablets. These tablets can be bought at any druggist in either natural or chocolate flavor. This is Carlton Brickert speaking for Lum and Abner and Horlick, who now bid you all good night and good health.